So in this video, I am going to show you how you can. So in this video, I am going to show you how we can how we can plot temporal data using R Studio. So when you work with R uh, data set or a temporal data set, the first analysis type that you are conducting is uh, plotting this temporal data based on the temporal component. So when we consider temporal data or the time series data, we know that there is a temporal component like maybe a monthly data set or annual data set, maybe it is a daily data set which collect uh, daily. Uh, so likewise, we are going to use this temporal component to uh, plot this data set based on the given time period. So first and foremost, I am going to read this data particular data set so when you consider this data set there is a date component or the temporal component for the each for the each day of the month and it has uh, coronavirus cases uh, of uh, six different countries starting from uh, march first of march 2022 and lastly june 27th sorry may 27th of 2021 so when you are before you uh, going to start plotting this data you have to make sure the data set that you are considering is arranged or sorted according to the oldest to the earliest date or the latest date so the countries that i am considering is afghanistan australia austria belgium brazil and china so i have chosen china because you have you can actually compare with the other when plotting product completed you can see that in the initially the china's daily case numbers are uh, high rocket when compared to the other countries however it gradually decreased uh, while the other countries uh, chart is exponentially increased towards this uh, period so you have to make sure there is uh, if there is missing data, you have to overcome that by uh, doing something like a predictive mean mapping or average number should be replaced to that particular date. Um, and also there may be instances that you have negative values because when I first uh, encountered this data set, I found that there are uh, negative data sets recorded uh, as case numbers in uh, pertaining to different date periods. So if you are going to use that in the same way, you might have some uh, complications as well as erroneous results in the final graph. Data set in the uh, R Studio and run the and check whether how data is arranged from top and bottom. So when you look at that, uh, initially you can see that China have a very high number of daily cases reported and while the other countries are almost none and later you can see that it is uh, increasing slightly while the case numbers of China decrease gradually. So uh, at the end of the period you can observe in China the case numbers are almost none when comparing its prop to uh, its population while the Brazil has uh, increased drastically and Belgium, Austria also increased uh, significantly so when you uh, work with time series data set and when you want to upload this data according to the time series as time series the time series as time series data the first and foremost what you have to do is that you have to remove the temporal component of the data set so so first when you heard that we are removing the temporal component of the data set you it may sound like uh, unorthodox however when you look at the how it is going and how we uh, prepare the data set of time series object you can clearly see uh, it, it has no uh, whatsoever when creating the time series data set so uh, we can do that first of all we have to see number of columns available so in here uh, you can see so in here we know that there are seven columns available so the first column here is uh, you know the date column so if you are if you want to remove this date column we can use this uh, cases uh, function and we can uh, select only the 
columns uh, numbers between 2 and 7 so likewise we can obtain the time period and then we can run and see the head of the new uh, s new data set and here you can see that it has only the country names and the date component or temporal component has been removed so when you consider a time series data set you can use any data set that uh, changes over time for an example you can uh, use rainfall data set or the temporal uh, temperature data sets or maybe even stock market fluctuations as well however in this situation i am going to use this example since it is a novel the current topic of discussion in the world so first of all you have to create a uh, daily date object so when you are working with monthly data sets you don't have to create this pretty straightforward uh, however when you are dealing with daily data sets you it is better if you create a daily data object date object uh, based on the starting date and the end date so you can create a daily date object like this specifying the start date and the end date and then uh, you have to uh, get the starting day of the year so in here what i have done is simply i have calculated the or formatted the starting date for the number of the day of the year for an example in here the starting day is 2020 march 1st so when you uh, run this code so you can see the start date is 2020 61 in here 61 refers to the 61st day of the year so when you add the number of days from january to so when you add the number of days from january to march you can uh, simply see that 61st is the uh, march 1st so the next step is to create a time series object so you can use the ts uh, function to create a time series object so in here you have to specify the data set that you are going to use so we specify the smo data set where we uh, remove the uh, temporal component and then we are in here start under the start component you have to specify the starting date so for this i have selected the starting date and you have to make sure to select frequency as 365 because for this uh, we are considering uh, 365 days for the so if you are considering a monthly data set the frequency should be 12 or else quarterly there are four quarters per year therefore four uh, if you are considering annual data set which there will be only a one data per year you can specify one so we can run this so after that after creating the time series object you can plot it very easily so we'll run again so here now you can see when you zoom how the uh, daily coronavirus cases has changed over time so you can see in uh, very easily and compare uh, in uh, for an example in belgium you can observe a peak in this period or in around august of 2020 while in china you can see uh, initially they have a high number of cases which gradually decrease over time so yeah we can observe two peaks uh, maybe it's the first wave around 2020 august and the second wave around uh, Ma early march 2021 so likewise you can create time series object and display data in graph uh, in graphs using a time series object so another way that we can conduct uh, very intuitive graphs uh, and improve the visualization is to use ggplot2 graphs so for that you have to install uh, import first of all import this uh, develop dev tools library and then you can uh, you have to install this github repository shrinks uh, jg45 so you can easily uh, pass this uh, time series uh, object to to this auto plot uh, function and get the time series graphs so let's see
so now we, when you look at this now it is now very clear as well as very uh, visually enhanced when comparing to the previous plots so apart from that you can also uh, display these graphs in a single uh, facets so for that you can uh, simply use this argument as false so we we'll run again so now you can see uh, when comparing the graphs with the other countries such as uh, brazil other uh, line graphs are almost none when comparing because uh, the brazil graph is uh, really high as well as there are daily coronavirus case high as well as there are daily coronavirus cases are uh, very high when compared to the other countries so in this way we can use uh, ggplot2 graphs uh, 44 uh, github repository to uh, prepare time series that's it from this video see you in the next video